Can you obtain all of the nutrients you need from food alone or do you need to be taking nutritional supplements? That's what you're going to find out in this video. So you're probably confused because some people will tell you that as long as you eat a nutritionally complete diet, then you don't need to take supplements. And in theory, that makes sense. Food, after all, should give the body everything it needs to survive and maintain health. This has worked very well throughout our history. But the question we need to ask is this. Does it apply in the modern world for people who are not in a state of perfect health? There's this idea that if we eat the same foods as our ancestors, a species appropriate diet, then this will provide the body with all of the nutrients it needs. The problem is we no longer live in the same environment as we did just 100 years ago. We went from this to this. Now facing an entirely different set of stresses, ranging from man-made pollutants artificial chemicals in our food and our drinking water, heavy metals such as cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and lead. We're surrounded by electromagnetic radiation from electronic devices, and we willingly expose ourselves to artificial light at all of the wrong times. So then we're left asking this, does our modern environment actually deplete us of essential nutrients? And if the modern world does increase the demand for nutrition, then maybe what we needed 10,000 years ago is not enough to meet the demands of today. To answer this, we should look at how the human body deals with stress and builds resilience. The most important thing to understand is that the main way that your body deals with stress of any kind is by making energy. To paraphrase a quote from one paper, stress being defined as the brain and body response aimed at promoting adaptation in the face of real or imagined threats, this cannot occur without energy. Every aspect of the stress response requires energy. And how do we make enough energy to mobilize a healthy response to stress? Our cells convert food into usable energy in the form of ATP. This takes place in the mitochondria of every cell, and the process requires micronutrients, these being vitamins, minerals, and other cofactors. The key point to drill down here is that greater exposure to stresses of any kind, like those in our modern world, increases the demand for cellular energy and that by definition increases your demand for micronutrients but on top of that these nutrients are also used to build lots of different types of molecules proteins enzymes all of these things are needed to protect the body from toxic insults the main protection against disease causing agents is the body's internal antioxidant system if this system fails or becomes depleted for whatever reason chronic disease can swiftly result. And this is indeed the case with toxic heavy metals like arsenic, cadmium, mercury, and lead, which practically every one of us has an ongoing exposure to. Not only do these toxic metals cause systemic imbalances in essential minerals like zinc, copper, iron, and selenium, but unfortunately, they also act in practically the same way as every other toxin does. This is by taxing one of the body's main protective antioxidants called glutathione. Indeed, cells which are depleted in glutathione are more susceptible to the toxic effects of heavy metals, and supplementing glutathione can be protective in many respects. However, through depleting glutathione levels, this also has knock-on effects on other nutrients which then function to pick up the burden. These include lipoic acid, vitamin C, and vitamin E, which are all involved in antioxidant recycling. To quote another paper, glutathione depletion and glutathione supplementation have specific effects on mercury toxicity, both by altering antioxidant status in the body and by directly affecting the excretion of mercury and other heavy metals into the bile. They go on to mention lipoic acid, which also improves glutathione levels, supports the mobilization and excretion of mercury, and decreases cellular damage and neurotoxicity. The research has also shown a collection of other supplements which also aid supporting body clearance, ranging from NAC, thiamine, selenium, and zinc. However, Heavy metal toxicity is only one of many things which we have to deal with and our ancestors didn't have to deal with. We're also bombarded with persistent organic pollutants, these being man-made substances and chemicals, also referred to as forever chemicals because of their persistence in the environment. They include PCBs, phthalates, dioxins, pesticides, and flame retardants. Research estimates that the average human is contaminated by more than 700 of these novel chemicals, many of which are suspected to play a role in cancer, diseases of the nervous system, and the cardiovascular system. And even if you take all of the precautions in the world and you do your best to avoid them, 
you're still going to be exposed to this stuff. Because of their ability to bioaccumulate, they're found at practically every level of the food chain. And yes, this also includes eggs, dairy, and meat. Now, fortunately, the body can get rid of these chemicals, but once again, it uses nutrients to do so. The detoxification of these toxic chemicals through the liver increases the demand for nutrients across the board, including sulfur, amino acids, B vitamins, minerals, and our antioxidant defense system. And once again, there are multiple studies looking at the protective effects for nutritional supplements, say against air pollution toxicity, or against the toxicity of other man-made chemicals, which also fall under this category. But let's just say, hypothetically, for example, someone manages to avoid heavy metals and pollutants completely. There are still numerous modern-day practices which theoretically also increase our demand for nutrition. Your exposure to artificial light is just one example. Exposure to light emitted from electronic devices on human skin cells, even in cases of short exposures, can increase the generation of reactive oxygen species. This ultimately means that it damages the skin and this has knock-on effects across the entire body. Or how about we look in the eye where artificial light is known to cause widespread problems and is referred to as blue light hazard. Although there are very interesting studies looking at supplemental nutrients, which can also exert positive effects. These include astaxanthin and zeaxanthin, among many others. And to top it off, the electromagnetic radiation, which is emitted from those same electronic devices, exerts much more concerning effects, which are many in number, but ultimately all of which culminate in severe oxidative stress. It turns out the brain is particularly vulnerable to this. EMF exposure can tank the levels of melatonin, one of the main antioxidants used in the brain. In fact, melatonin has been referred to as a potential shield against radiation of this kind, and for good reason too. Melatonin supplementation has consistently been shown to provide some protection against the negative impacts of EMF. This also applies for other supplemental nutrients, including omega-3, vitamin C, and vitamin E. But just for the sake of argument, let's imagine that someone somehow avoided exposure to all of these different things, okay? If you, like most people, have eaten a diet rich in omega-6 polyunsaturated fats, found in vegetable oils and seed oils, you will be dealing with the after effects for several years to come. The reason is that these omega-6 poofers are incorporated into the membrane of every cell in your body. They literally become part of the body. And we know that a higher ratio of these fats promotes a low level inflammatory environment. And because vitamin E is responsible for protecting these fats, there is good reason to believe that vitamin E requirement will also go up significantly if someone has a history of eating large amounts of PUFA. To quote one author, excess PUFA consumes vitamin E, which would naturally raise the demand for this antioxidant. So all things considered, if you look at everything we've just focused on, then one could safely say that people with a high exposure to these modern influences, because of their depleting effect on nutrients, likely have a greater demand for nutrients across the board. But let me just be clear, I am not saying that everyone needs to be taking antioxidant supplements. It might be beneficial for some people and actually be detrimental for other people, so that needs to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. But just as a baseline, taking everything that we've looked at into consideration, I think it's fair to say that the uh, requirement for micronutrients being vitamins, minerals, cofactors is probably higher in our modern world compared to what it was 10,000 years ago. That also means that the amount of nutrition that we required to stay healthy 10,000 years ago is potentially not going to be sufficient in our modern world. Now, if you're in a state of perfect health, you probably don't need to take any type of supplement. But what happens if we consider chronic disease when it's added into the mix? Now, if you're someone who has a chronic health condition such as diabetes, metabolic syndrome, some kind of cardiovascular disease, or say chronic fatigue syndrome, then I would almost certainly recommend that you do take nutritional supplements. This is ultimately because aside from all of the baseline stresses that we've already looked at, the disease process itself 
depletes your nutritional status. Inflammation independently tanks nutrients at the cellular level. One example is vitamin B6 with plasma levels falling by up to 50% when the inflammatory response is activated. Or if we look at vitamin C, frequently found to be low in many different types of chronic disease, turns out that when this is depleted, it can be very difficult to re-establish a baseline just through food alone. One of the nutrients which takes the hardest hit is selenium. It's even recommended by these authors that supplementation should be considered in anyone with prolonged inflammatory states. The same applies for niacin, also known as vitamin B3, of which depletion is now known to be involved in many different diseases of aging. When inflammation is chronic, the actin form is rapidly depleted. A final example is phosphatidylcholine, which is particularly susceptible to becoming damaged and oxidized. Once it's become compromised, it needs to be replaced, and there's a large body of evidence which has shown beneficial effects from phosphatidylcholine supplementation for a variety of different problems. Just look at coenzyme Q10, which is almost consistently depleted in heart failure and and other cardiovascular conditions. Likewise, the same can be seen in liver disease where depletion is very common. On the other hand, take a look at thiamine. Anyone with any of the following conditions would probably do very well to supplement with this vitamin simply because there's such a wealth of literature behind it. Diabetes is almost synonymous with thiamine deficiency by definition simply because these people waste it at the level of the kidney. On top of that, there are also many conditions which feature regional deficiencies which are basically localized to one specific organ. This can happen in the brain, in the heart, or in other organs as well. These won't necessarily show up on tests and can be very difficult to treat with diet alone. This is particularly relevant in neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's. So to conclude, humans are now exposed to a variety of novel stresses which are relatively new. The main way we counteract this stress is through using micronutrients. The amount of nutrition that we needed 10,000 years ago is potentially not enough to stay healthy in our modern world to counteract these modern influences. Sometimes man-made problems demand man-made solutions, and this is where nutritional supplements can come in handy. Furthermore, chronic disease is known to increase the demand for micronutrients. Now, the most important baseline, the fundamental baseline is always going to be the diet, is always going to be the nutrition that you're getting from food. And if you're in perfect health, you might not need to take supplements. However, individual context is always the most important. If you're not in perfect health, or even more so if you have some kind of a chronic disease, it would be very silly to dismiss nutritional supplements simply because someone you're following has told you that your diet should be complete. Therapeutic doses of nutritional supplements can be extremely help helpful to lift someone out of a state of disease and restore some balance to the body. Now, just to finish off, knowing what to take and how to take it was never the topic of this video. What I really wanted to do was illustrate the point that changes in our modern environment can influence our nutritional status. And this might differ from person to person, but it's best not to think in black and white terms and not to be too rigid about um, approaching our health. So if you like this video, found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, see you next time.